The dial indicator is a useful tool that can be used to measure runout, piston position, bent shafts, valves, or for brake rotor warpage. It is a simple and easy to use precision measuring tool that all mechanics must master. Some dial indicators can measure smaller than one thousandths of an inch. Most mechanics will not require this kind of accuracy, so this lesson will focus on how to use a dial indicator that can read to within one thousandths of an inch. The basic parts of a dial indicator are bezel, used to rotate the zero to align with the needle, markers, used to provide reference points and rarely used by the mechanic, point, contacts the surface that needs measuring and can be replaced with different types, plunger, transfers the up and down movement to the inside of the dial indicator, turn counter, counts how many times the needle does one complete revolution, pointer, points to the measured number. There are two scales on the dial indicator. The outer scale is marked in one thousandths of an inch increments and each tenth number is marked to make reading easier. The small inner scale is numbered one through nine and each number represents one hundred thousandths of an inch. For each complete revolution of the outer scale, the small inner scale moves one number up or down. Before using the indicator, it must be mounted so there is no movement between the dial indicator and the part to be measured. If there is any looseness or movement, the reading will not be accurate. Position the indicator 90 degrees to the face of the part being measured. Press the dial indicator against the part so that the plunger is depressed about half of its travel. This loading of the plunger ensures the indicator can function properly. Lock the indicator into place and carefully rotate the part while you observe the dial readings. Read the dial face straight on so as not to read the wrong measurement. If the pointer does not move while the part is being rotated, the part has no runout or surface distortion. If it moves, there is runout or surface distortion. Stop when the needle moves to the maximum position to the left and rotate the bezel so the zero aligns with the pointer. Continue rotating the part until the pointer gets to the maximum position on the right. The total movement between the left and right measurements is how much runout or distortion the part has. In this example, the needle starts at zero and moves six thousandths to the right. The total runout of this part is six thousandths of an inch. In this example, the needle starts at zero and moves between the one thousandths and two thousandths inch lines. Since each line is one thousandths of an inch, if the needle is between them, it can be either rounded up or counted as five ten thousandths of an inch. The total runout for this part is fifteen ten thousandths of an inch.